everybody, this is Perch. In the past, I've talked about how social topics tend to age badly in comics. And uh, actually, I, I just restarted this video because I said, uh, you know, the, when these topics, uh, when these comics tackle topics like climate control, and I'm like, no, I'm talking, <laughs> I'm, I'm staring at this like piece in my car. I'm like, no, no, climate change. Anyway, I'm sorry. It's, it was funny to me. I'm uh, anyway, uh, mm, mm. anyway, I've talked about these things in the past, and while I still believe it's true, I think a lot of these social topics, they, they neither age well nor make a lot of sense in comics because of the nature of the world you've created. Um, there's still this, this strong desire, I think, for a lot of writers to touch on them, you know, and, and why not? You're, you're sitting there, and you're watching TV, and you've got the news on, and we're talking about racial injustice, we're talking about uh, police uh, issues and, and just the entire gamut of stuff. And so then you're going to sit down at your computer like, I need something to write. I know I'll, I'll, I'll jump on that bandwagon. And there was, uh, there was a writer, and I'm trying to remember who it was. I could swear it was Neil Gaiman, but uh, of, of late, I haven't been able to find the quote, so I'm thinking I'm wrong, who made the basic comment that you know writers of fiction should be inspired by the real world, but they have to be careful because if they, if they lean into it too hard, if they start to just copy what's in the real world, they're really not being creative. They're just kind of, you know, tracing real world events into their fiction. So I, I still believe all is true and I've done videos on that, but what I'm talking about today is not social issues. I'm kind of broadening it up a little bit to say any kind of topical fad um, it, it's, it's often a bad idea. It ages really, really badly. And I think there's a growing amount of writers, particularly for Marvel, who really want to lean into contemporary topics. They want to talk about, you know, uh, Netflix and chill. They want to talk about podcasting or, or these kind. you know, there, there's a lot of these kinds of things that are, are kind of hot current topics but you can almost guarantee they won't be in two years or five years. It'd be like I picked up a, a Marvel book the other day uh, in, in researching an old line. And there was like, as the, as the characters were walking, there was somebody in the back with a Coney uh, 2012 uh, t-shirt. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't age well. <laughs> just, you know, most, the best thing you get to hope for is that, you know, people just start to ignore it. But, you know, I'm looking at the solicitation and, and, for example, X Factor, which comes out here, I think, next week or the week after. One of the bits it's doing is they're taking Adam X, who was very much a character of the 90s, very much a kind of a poster child for, uh, you know, leaning into topical things, leaning into the moment, as opposed to maybe trying to, you know, create a compelling character. And they're, they basically reveal that Adam X has a you know, a, a, a kind of being a YouTuber. He's, he's basically a, a podcaster YouTuber. The, one of the reasons why this stuff uh, seems to age badly is that the people who are writing it often feel like they have a kind of a vague idea of what it is all about. Like when it, it's always funny to me when people portray uh, people who have a YouTube channel um, in comics, it's, it's portrayed clearly by somebody who has no idea of how any of this stuff works and probably hasn't watched any kind of YouTube things. Maybe they, they, they're dimly aware that like Rob Liefeld has put out a podcast for his, you know, his bit. And they're like, Oh, I know we'll have captain America. It'll be, it'll be super awkward. He'll be like podcasting, but he's old in his brain. It'll be hilarious. And it's, it's like, it, it always, it feels, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to find a word other than cringe because cringe has become the word to describe so many things in comics. And it's, I think it's, it's terribly overused. And it, but it, it, that is maybe the more pure version of that. Uh, or the, you know, it, it fits, it fits. You're just kind of like, you know, wince. It's, it's, it does not, it, it doesn't play well. It plays like the person who's writing. It doesn't really know what they're talking about, but they're trying to, they're trying to hang out with the cool kids. You know the meme that goes around of Steve Buscemi from um, 30 Rock, and he's he's dressed, he's like, hey there, fellow kids, and he's dressed up like a high schooler, but it's, you know, it's clearly, you know, current age Steve Buscemi. And it, it's, it's like, that's how a lot of this stuff comes across. Now, granted, I, I mean, you know, when you're churning out comics upon comics, dozens of comics uh, every, every week, then, you know, you, you do run out of ideas. I get that. But at the same time, you know, you, you want these comics to not 
age like milk. You, you want them to at least, you know, make it into trades and then maybe one day make it into an omnibus. And hey, you know, for the creators, there's an incentive to do this. They want to keep those royalties going. They actually want to keep making money. And and so it's it, there's this you can always tell like the writers who who lean into current things as a crutch. And that's how it really feels. It feels like a crutch. And I think in some cases you see writers get popular uh, because they happen to tap into kind of current culture and it, it strikes a chord with some people on Twitter or wherever it happens to be. And it's cool, but their, their star also, you know, fades really, really fast. An example of that, I think that who's going through it at this exact moment. And, you know, I, I, I hate to say it is uh, Leah Williams who, kind of came onto the scene and did Gwynpool and, and uh, got in with the Mary Jane comic and everything else. And there was this, this like, Oh man, she, she writes like us. And it, but it's already like, like she's on X factor and I'm noticing the commentary on the current issues are like, you know, grown and rather than, Hey, you know, here's somebody new and fresh. It's like that new and fresh burns off really, really quickly because of the tropes and things are being used. Now, I mean, here's hoping. I, I mean, I, I don't actually wish the, that, uh, you know, somebody's career comes to a premature end on anyone. I'd like to see them keep going and everything else. But you, you can see through the years various writers who've fallen into this trap. And the stuff just, just you know, it, it, it ages badly. And then the future work, I, it's, like, it's like getting, actually, you know what? It's, it's like getting typecast. It's like when an actor does you know, the same kind of action movie. And then they, they want to go and they want to do something serious. And it's like, you, you know, you, even if they have the ability to do it, you just, it, it doesn't take. It's, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's like Adam Sandler. He's done some movies that are not goofy idiot movies, but you know, what, what are the calls he's getting? What are the, the stuff he's doing? It's, it's the same it's the same stuff. It's like, he's still doing Billy Madison now. What is it? 20 years later. Uh, and, and that's, you know, and, and on some level you look at that and you, and you had fond memories of watching Billy Madison back originally, you know, it's like, Oh, that was something new and funny, but like 20 years later, it's like, okay, I, you know, I've, I've seen this movie before. It becomes less something kind of new and novel and fun and more like, you know, you, the best you can hope for is kind of nostalgia. And so I, I think that there's there's a definite trap in there for comic writers who find themselves, uh, you know, really kind of hooked into current culture. And again, it's all the worse if they're really not, if, if it's just kind of surface level. It's it's like, you know, it, 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 it just, you know, the other writer that I think flirts with this from time to time, and I, I think she does get uh, a lot of praise, is, is Kelly Thompson. Uh, her work often feels very... I don't know. It, maybe it's 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 in that same vein as as what people sometimes complain about uh, Brian Michael Bendis for. There's a style to the writing that after after a while, it's like, well, this is clearly a Bendis book, you know, or this is clearly a Thompson book. It, it feels the same. It, it reads the same. And I think I think the writers kind of are, are aware of when they're getting into this trap. You know, I, it's like you, you look at Tom King, and when he was doing the uh, the early work for. Rorschach, he was making a lot of comments about, you know, he wanted to push himself to write differently, to have a different tone, to have a different feel. And he didn't say in the interview, because I'm worried I'm getting typecast to doing the exact same work. And every time people pick up a Tom King book, they, they don't have to read it. They already know what they're in for. And, and so I, I realized, by the way, I've mixed kind of two things, writing style and also just playing up current fads. Uh, but, but they often go together. It's because a lot of people, their writing style is to heavily, heavily leverage current ads and current dialogue and current things that they're seeing on Netflix. And it, it dies off really quickly. And I think applied to a lot of these characters, it has a way of aging things unnaturally. It's like, you know, the, again, the meme of the, the guy and he's shooting somebody in the background and then it goes to the second panel and he's like, why did you do that to yourself? And it's, it's, it's a little bit of that. It's when I see people talking about how the superhero genre is dead and, you know, some of these books are, are, are dead and it's like, yeah, except, you know, I, the, the movies are still making billions of dollars, I guess not this year, but you know, they, you know, it's, it's, it's a safe bet that if they, you know, 
throughout an Avengers three somehow, or I guess Avengers would be Avengers three. It would be Avengers five. Um, it would make a lot of money. It's a safe bet. It would make a billion dollars. And my hero academia is a you know, tried and true superhero book. It's, it's doing just fine. And so I, I don't think it's, uh, it's that that genre is dead. I just think if you write it in a stereotypical typecast, you know, way, you, you, you kill off that, you kill off that character. You kill off that superhero. It's like, you know, Gwynpool as a character, I mean, who knows where that all would have gone, but that character might have gotten more popular. It might have actually been something if it ever had emerged out of its kind of one note joke of a book, but it, it didn't. And, you know, it's, it's, I guess Gwynpool made an appearance in, uh, in Ten of Swords. So uh, there's that. That's cool. Anyway, what do you think? Uh, do you like these little contemporary jokes and comments? Does it add to the flavor of the book? Does it make you feel like, hey, this is something for me and I see myself in this and that's cool? Or do you kind of roll your eyes and you feel it ages really badly? Let me know in the comments below what you think, how you feel about all this. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Most importantly, and as always, thanks for listening.